Hello, my name is Haley Walker, and my topic is invasive snakes and the threat they pose to ecosystems. The purpose of my topic is to examine the invasive snakes as ecosystem engineers. To start off some background about invasive species, an invasive species is any kind of organism that's not native to a region and it causes harm to the ecosystem. They reproduce quickly, they spread aggressively, and about 42% of endangered animals are at risk because of invasive species. They're harmful to the environment, but also to the economy. They risk native animals and plants. They devalue the amount and the quality of land. They destroy crops, which leads to agriculture productivity lowering and tourism. They can be introduced accidentally or on purpose. Some background on snakes is that they are carnivorous legless reptiles that are vertebrates, have about 1200 bones, their scales are made of keratin, and they molt or shed their skin multiple times a year. There's about 3,400 known species of snake as of 2019. Around 300 are venomous though. 90 to 100 million years ago, snakes arose from prehistoric lizards. The lifespan of species varies. Our first study focuses on brown tree snakes in Guam specifically. Native to North Indonesia, the Solomon Islands, New Guinea, and Australia. The population is believed in Guam to have originated from Admiralty Islands. They're introduced by warships in World War II that were traveling goods. Their size can be about three to four feet on Guam, even though in their origin, they can grow to be 10 feet. They can weigh about five pounds. They're successful as invasive species due to their fast reproduction, the absence of natural population control. They can reproduce year round, and they also live in a non-seasonal climate. Brown tree snakes in Guam have negative effects such as power outages, loss of pets, extinction or endangerment of many species, including the most famous on Guam, the loss of 10 native species of birds, and almost the extinction of two more because brown tree snakes have eaten them almost all. They also bite humans. There's a loss of trees and plants due to the lack of dispersal of seeds that are usually carried by birds. There also is insect blooms due to the lack of predation on them, which can affect agriculture neg negatively. Some benefits are that the brown tree snakes keep in line other induced species and sometimes extinct them altogether. The first study origin and population growth of brown tree snakes on Guam. The goals of this study were to estimate the number of brown snake tree snakes and their growth since 1985. The impact on the veget vegetation also. Methods include a census of two sites in central and northern Guam with a focus on a brown tree snake from 1985 to 1990. They would take a census of the number of snakes found on chain link fences and use transects in other areas to collect the data. They also took transects of vegetation to measure how it was being affected. They also looked at newspaper articles and sightings from other people to examine where brown tree snakes have been seen. They also had visual expeditions with mark and recapture methods to uh, see how many there were returning each year. Main findings included the rapid decreasing density of native species of rats, birds, lizards, and bats is a sign that the population is growing. There were also increased number of sightings during the mark and recapture tests, with there being 50 in 1895. But in 1988, there was a 30% decrease. However, in following years, that began to rise. There's a correlation with the transects taken with vegetation over the five years because it showed a lower vegetation than beginning in 1985 than it did in 1990. 
figure one shows that in the different testing spots, the decrease and the increase of the sightings of brown tree snakes. What can be done in Guam is the use of parasites, the development of a virus, barriers, and traps. These can all be used to control the population of brown tree snakes. The Burmese python in the Everglades is our second study that we focus on. They can grow 16 to 23 feet. They can weigh up to 200 pounds. The average lifespan of them is 20 to 25 years. They're native to Southeast Asia. They were introduced by the Everglades due to people releasing their pets because they became so out of hand or they escaped from captivity. They're successful due to the production of the large amounts of eggs, which can be up to 100 at a time. They also have a large abundance to prey because they don't have a specific diet. Their large size allows for low predation against them. Some negative effects of them are the declines in many species of birds, mammals, and reptiles. For example, bobcats and alligators. They pose a risk to endangered species. They attack pets. They're decreasing hunting availability. They take up resources for limited amounts to native snakes and other animals. They also disrupt the food chain. Some positive effects, however, that there's low predation on species such as squirrels and turtles, so their populations are getting higher. In our second study, the indirect effects of invasive Burmese pythons on ecosystems in southern Florida, the goals were identifying the indirect effects on non-prey species of Burma, Burmese pythons to examine how the ecosystem in the Everglades is being affected. Whether predation rates on artificial turtle nests vary spatially in relation to the severity of the python declines of mammals. Some methods were monitoring the 13 artificial nests within 14 days between May and July multiple times in 2013. This would see where mammals were spotted and how often. Three treatments were done, core areas where pythons were known to inhabit, peripheral areas where pythons had been seen, and extralimital areas where pythons were not all the time. They took the average number of sightings between these months to measure those treatments. In total, they measured about 183 turtles nests with a 560 sightings. In court areas, there was a decrease in the amount of mammals that were shown on the camera. In peripheral areas, there was low diversity, but they had more mammal sightings than in court areas. Extraliminal areas had the highest number of mammal sightings and a higher biodiversity. All the areas were significantly different from each other due to the pythons being present or not. Figure two shows the different areas in a bar graph. In all of the measured mammals, there is an increase in the extraliminal areas than there are in the core and peripheral showing more sightings of mammals. What can be done about them is the hunting and killing, the trapping of barriers, and uh, tracking males with planes to lead back to females to kill them. The boa constrictor in the Virgin Islands is our next topic. They grow to be six and a half to 10 feet long, can weigh more than 100 pounds. They originate in Central and Southern America, South America from Mexico to Northern Argentina. Their lifespan is the same as the python, about 25 to 30 years. They're accidentally in, in, introduced, but not known where. This is successful due to the fact that they don't have specific prey, they're large size, and they reproduct almost 100 eggs each time. Some negative effects are that they pose an end a threat to endangered species. They decrease the number of native species. They injure humans, although rare. They eat pets. Some positive effects, however, is that they regulate the possum population, which can also decrease the amount of diseases for transmission to humans. 
<clears throat> in our third study, The Origin of Invasive Boa Constrictor Population in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, its goals were to observe the onset invasion by boa constrictor snakes in an island context and pinpoint where the invasion took place. There were nine boas tested, two juveniles and seven adults. They used DNA samples from the skin of shredded captive animals. They used this to grind them into a solution and create a DNA pellet. They also tested the micro mitochondrial locus amplification using polymerase chain reaction. And the sequence, the DNA, specifically the CYTB gene, to see this. The main findings were two of the nine snakes were matching with J1, matching 772 out of 775 nucleotides, which was an 98% or 98% match to Central American and Mexican populations. The second juvenile matched 359 out of 366 nucleotides, but there was a 100% match to boas in Colombian population. This is thought to be due to two separate invasions. However, over time, they mixed heritage over the years. Figure three is showing the results of the experiment of how similar they are to the different kinds of boas. What can be done is trapping, barriers, killing, and pesticides. The analysis is that brown tree snakes have caused significantly big decrease in the amount of species in Guam. They've grown more invasive since being introduced and have pushed some species to extinction. The Burmese python has taken over the Everglades due to the release of pet owners who have decided snake was too big to care for. They have caused a decrease in the amount of animals and resources. Boa constrictors have become invasive to the Virgin Islands. They're believed to closely be related to boa species from Central America, Colombia, due to the observation of DNA sequencing. Certain species of snakes have introduced to other regions and began dominating them. Due to fast reproduction, no specific prey, large sizes, and other characteristics, they've become invasive species to those regions. Native species are also suffering because of these invasive species introduction to their own region. The reason inc reasons include the disruption to the food chain, causing risk to endangered species by eating them and taking away other resources. They're causing indirect effects on the other animals and vegetation that relies on prey of invasive species also. Invasive species of snakes, such as the brown tree snake, the Burmese python, and the boa constrictor, all cause negative impacts on the ecosystems. The ongoing battle of invasive species, including snakes, is a growing problem that must be solved to sustain native creatures already living there, but also avoid economic impacts. Thank you, my name is Haley Walker again, and thank you for your time.